Hi, I'm Mark Edwards. Welcome to Travelog and welcome to our Taiwan series. I've literally just arrived in Taipei on our little three week adventure and I'm so excited about discovering this city. Although we're only here for a shortish amount of time, we're going to attempt to cram in as much as is physically possible. On a personal level, I can't wait to hike up Ali Shan and maybe bump into some of the Aboriginal tribes up there. Also, get a bit of R&R &R down on the beach and catch a bit of tan. So get comfortable. First stop, Taipei City. Surrounded by mountains at the northern tip of the island, with the sea just a stone's throw away, Taipei is a bustling melee of skyscrapers, temples, markets and motor scooters. All major cities are melting pots of some description, and the chief ingredients in Taipei's own particular pot are tradition and modernity. It's a high-tech, innovative city with a distinct local character. I'm not afraid to show who it is and who it's going to be, not to mention who it was. So if you're a culture vulture, then fear not. It's also one of the best cities on earth to gorge yourself with exquisite food on every corner. But just in case you're worried about piling on the pounds, you'll easily burn them off with plenty of shopping to keep your better halves happy. Welcome to Taipei's very own Palace Museum. It's my first stop in the city and it should be yours too because over two million people come here every year making it the number one tourist attraction in Taiwan. It's full of Chinese art and historical artifacts. It's definitely one of the world's finest collections of its kind. And although the museum opened in 1965, the arduous journey that brought the priceless treasures here began many years before that. It started during the Second World War when 20,000 crates full of Chinese history began an odyssey by rail, truck, ox cart, raft and foot. The purpose being to keep them out of the clutches of the Japanese occupying forces. Incredibly, not a single item was lost or damaged. Many of these crates eventually made their way to Taiwan. The Palace Museum now has a collection of some 6,000 works of art representing the best of 5,000 years of Chinese creativity. Yet there are just a fraction of the more than 700,000 paintings, tapestries, books, porcelain, bronzes and other objects that are stored here. There are several national treasures that really ought to be on your must-see list when you come here. Among them is the Mao Gong Ting, a cauldron-like basin dating from the Western Zhou Dynasty in the 11th century BC. On the inside of the Ting is a 500 character inscription. This inscription is considered a calligraphic masterpiece as it is not only an authentic record of history, but also high in artistic and literary value. The characters explain that the Ting originally belonged to Mao Gong, a relative of the Zhou dynasty ruler. With the government of the time being weak and incompetent, the emperor enlisted Mao Gong to rectify matters sending him a number of gifts as an incentive. The Ting was cast by Mao Gong himself to record the event and express his gratitude. Today, if the evident excitement among the crowds is anything to go by, it's we who should be expressing our gratitude to Mao Gong for leaving us such a splendid work of art. How on earth did they manage to inscribe bronze like that back then? succulent piece of pork. I just want to bite into it right now. At the Palace Museum, a select few items are on permanent display. They include the meat-shaped stone we saw earlier and the exceptional jadeite cabbage, a jade carving made to look like bok choy. The most popular items in the museum are housed together in the special permanent exhibition room. The exhibits are rotated on a regular basis every few months where it's said to take a full 12 years to display the entirety of the collection. Now, I definitely recommend hiring one of these audiobooks really helped me through the day. But if you want a free tour, come here at 10 a.m. in the morning or 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, you can get yourself a free English tour. However, personally, I think one day wasn't enough for me at the Palace Museum. A newer part of the Palace Museum organises regular exhibitions with the younger generations in mind. Here, traditional impressions of art are combined with a more modern approach. 
So I'm in a slightly special part of the Palace Museum where they're bringing tradition into modern life. So drinking tea within this modern art piece, old is new. This newly evolving concept is not confined to the Gugong. The Cloud Gate Dance Theatre Group blends modern sensibility with traditional Asian mythology, folklore and aesthetics. Work was inspired by the aesthetics of Chinese calligraphy. We don't try to imitate the calligraphy, but the spirit of the calligraphy, the energy. Since the dancers are trained in martial arts, in Tai Chi, in Qigong, that's our, 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 our main diet. Their latest production, Cursive, was inspired by ancient Chinese calligraphy and their related movements. Their highly innovative approach has earned the Cloud Gate Group extensive international acclaim. It's now acknowledged as Taiwan's premier dance troupe. This theme of old is new, which in a way revitalizes the traditional culture, has also carried itself admirably into the retail world. France Porcelain is an internationally recognized brand from Taiwan. You can find everyday utensils with a twist, in that they are also high quality pieces of art. Uh, from the line, the collection, the shape, you can see that the front collection is kind of fusion of West and the East, uh, olden days and the modern days. Actually, the painting way is based on Qin Dynasty, right. but we give it, it more modern-like. So uh, you, can t you can look like uh, the, the butterfly or the bird is uh, become very uh, vivid, ah. just like a real, real, uh, real stuff. So you yeah. bring you bring the paintings alive. Yes, yes, that's right. So this collection here, uh, we uh, worked with a National Palace Museum. Right. Actually, we uh, interpreted a uh, large collection from this painting. You can t you can see from th these oh, pages. Okay, okay, you I see. see? La that is a uh, uh, flat sketch, but we give it live and uh, uh, interpret it into a 3D uh, tabletop collection. Right, uh -huh. very impressive. Can, so <laughs> is, this, is this just for show or can we buy? Sure, some of, of these? course. So uh, when you come to Taiwan, one of the main things that you simply have to do is head to the many night markets they have. And the one that we're in here is called Shilin. And it's arguably, it's undisputably the king of night markets in Taiwan. It's got a history of over 100 years. And as you can see, it's renowned for food. Food is its main thing. Night markets are an essential element of life in Taiwan and a top attraction for visitors. They burst into life every night in towns and neighborhoods throughout the island. Shilin Night Market in Taipei is the largest and oldest of them all, and it's renowned for the quality and variety of its food, as well as its budget prices. And you can buy almost anything here. I don't know what this is, I'll give it a go. Oh, peppery, I think chicken or something. Mm. 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 Very nice. Do be wary of those funny if it hadn't been me eating it moments. But above all, take in the fantastic insight into the life of the Taiwan people that Xinyi can offer you. Thanks to the subtropical weather, you can eat here very late. And most people do. Regional snacks from the island, food from all over China, Japanese dishes, as well as international treats, keep this place packed every night. Bear in mind that the majority of these markets are 24 hours. Perfect for all you night owls, or anyone feeling a little peckish after a night on the tiles.